I wish I had a job that I had the security. I miss the security. I miss being able to go to the grocery store and buy anything I needed. I miss being able to pay my bills like I used to. I was a corrections officer for five years, so I made good money, and I got injured on the job. And I have, had, had come to the point where I had exhausted all of BWC could, could do for me except for uh, treatments. I got forced into retirement. Early retirement, you get less money. Um, so my pension is small. Since 2000, we've had a, the per capita income has declined over $11,000. So we've had some plant closures in our community. Back when I was growing up, a lot of our families depended on factories um, to make a good living uh, and provide for their families. And those factories have closed. And um, I feel like that that has caused a lot of situational poverty over the last probably 10, 15 years. I have two children and I have five grandchildren. And my daughter-in-law and my youngest grandson live with me. I love that Heritage and Rose Avenue feed the kids. They have an after-school program all summer long, every day. I often say that when I first started teaching, we fed our children lunch. And that was a, a normal meal to be fed at school. Um, since then, we have um, started the breakfast program. And I often say that I wonder if before I retire, I won't see a dinner program. You gotta get involved. You gotta get the kids to feel part of uh, the program. And uh, so that's what I've been trying to do, is to bring the kids in. There seems to be kind of a wall sometimes between the food service and the teaching. And I wanted to break that wall down, that it's actually a learning process. About 50% of our school children are on the free and reduced lunch program, countywide. Um, at Cherry Hill Elementary in Washington Courthouse District, where there are kindergarten through second grade students, that figure is as high as 70%. Many of our kids also um, go home often to families that work different shifts and so they may not be able to have access to a family dinner like what we would think of as a family dinner. The teachers will tell you it's hard to teach a child that's hungry because their attention span is just not there and and you need the nutritious foods to get your brain working to get that kick start that you need. Like every place the baby boomers are aging so that um, create some demands there too. If you're older and you don't have the right foods, your health goes down, your weight goes up, then your health goes more. I still think there's people that will not ask. Maybe neighbors know, maybe family members of people that just don't want to put their face on the face of hunger. They have to make decisions on what they're going to purchase. And they have to decide whether they can buy their prescription medicine or whether they can buy food. And, you know, if they have to have the prescription medicine, that, that's got to come. And it breaks my heart when I hear of elderly people eating cat food. I mean, that is a reality. That really does happen. If you don't eat right, you don't have the energy to get up and go. Do you have emotions because you feel like, you know, it impacts a lot of stuff. I think there's a lot of organization and there's a lot of very dedicated people that's willing to volunteer a lot of time to tackle this. There's of course the County Food Bank, there's our food bank, there's the well, there's lots of organizations that I think do work well together to try to do the best we can. Uh, I feel like that we have more of a support system now. I um, have been witness to many of our resources opening, such as the well at Sunnyside, uh, the Rose Avenue Community Center, and the many churches that are providing meals. You know, our Fayette County Food Pantry had a 10% increase the first six months of this year in the number of requests. So there's something going on out there, and I'm hoping that our group meetings, our community conversations will help us identify those issues and help correct them. There's always somebody that just because their house is painted white and they've got the white picket fence doesn't mean that everything's okay on the inside.